You're listening to Serafina Speaks for Children Who Think, the show that delivers you my take on topics that are important. I'm your host, Serafina Melina Durban. Let's go right ahead to the show, shall we? Hey, it's Serafina. Today's topic came to me in Season 1, Episode 5, in Pajama Weirdisms, when I said this. There was a big problem when a woman was escorted out of another Tesco supermarket when she walked in wearing animal print pyjamas. Then again, listeners, celebrities like Jennifer Aniston and Victoria Beckham walk about, shop and attend events in their gym jams. Isn't this a bit odd? Could this be a double standard? It made me think about celebrities being given special treatment, perks and red carpet opportunities just because they're seen as celebrities. I said back then I'd investigate this more, and here we are. I'm torn. I'm not sure I like the idea of celebrities, or if I'm more uncomfy about what celebrity culture is doing to shape how we feel about ourselves. Some people are treated as celebrities, while other talented people live ordinary lives where they're not recognised. Being a celebrity can't be about pure talent. It just can't. It's not a simple case of being good at something and people liking what you do. Then abracadabra becoming a celebrity. There's more to it. In fact, there's several parts to this. It starts with what a celebrity is, goes on to who becomes one, and then once these people are celebrities, what kind of preferential treatment they get. We're surrounded by people held up as fancy schmancy celebs. What is celebrity? Neil Gabler in his book, Life the Movie, How Entertainment Conquered Reality, defines celebrity as human entertainment. He means a person providing entertainment for others, just by the process of them living. These people live out stories that grab our attention and the interest of the media. This is a modern way of looking at celebrity, as early ideas were about people who were heroic achievers. But internet celebrities aren't heroes or extraordinarily talented. I'm sure there are internet influencers who are both heroic and talented. The late Dane Deborah James, known as Bow Babe, raised more than £11 million for Cancer Research UK. Most content creators share experiences that relate to others. They might be, or pretend to be, authentic in their life telling. When celebrities package up their lives and play this out on social media, every action becomes a performance. These content creators map out their private lives in the public world. Who becomes a celebrity? What turns someone into a celebrity? The big answer seems to be stories. The main reason we want to read about certain people, or we want to watch television reports about them, is that we're interested in their stories. They give us their public selves, and we get to chew over what they expose for us. Lots of celebrities have accomplished a great deal. Star athletes are celebrities, they're also achievers. Likewise, famous actors, musicians, and comedians are undeniably celebrities, but they're also amazing entertainers. You'll notice I'm not reeling off a long list of athletes, actors, musicians and comedians for you. It's deliberate. The people I see as air quote celebrities might not be the ones you regard as this too. Take the King of England. He's famous. We probably agree on that. But is he a celebrity? I'd say stories about him have been interesting, but I don't see him as a celebrity. Do you see him as a celebrity, or is he famous? Horatio. Do you think the King of England is famous, or a celebrity, or both? He's not a celebrity, but he's famous. I think the King is both. The boundaries between fame and celebrity aren't obvious, but I bet he's seen as a celebrity by Americans. That's a great point. Good to remember cultural differences. When American actor Meghan Markle joined the royal family, she was already a celebrity because of her role in the Netflix series Suits. She became even more famous when she married Prince Harry. Then there's blurry boundaries between celebrities and politicians. 
Do we think Britain's Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak, is famous or a celebrity? Or neither of these? I don't see him as a celebrity, but I think of him as a bit famous because of his role in politics. But once he's no longer Prime Minister and he stops giving stories worth hearing about, his fame will fade. Donald Trump, ex-president of the United States, has a different past, including pro-wrestling and reality TV. Like him or not, this means he's both famous and a celebrity. There's a difference between everyday traditional politicians and superstar ones who perform in the style of celebrities. Trump was a manufactured celebrity politician. His version of celebrity looks pretty unlikable and clownish to me. Am I right or am I right? On the other hand, celebrity life, as lived by showbiz personalities, can seem glittery and fascinating. No wonder so many people aspire to become a celebrity. Back before I was born, the Kardashian family created what being influencers means now. They earned star power because of their reality TV show, Keeping Up With The Kardashians. They also built an online presence and launched their clothing, makeup and beauty product lines. Most of all, they influenced millions of fans across the world. People looked to them for tips on makeup, music, clothes, dance, relationships, fashion and more. I don't follow them, but I know other people admire and pay attention to them. Before I dive into celebrity special treatment a bit more, here's info on a podcast I listen to and enjoy. Kids Law is co-hosted by 12-year-old Alma Constance and adult Lucinda. The podcast helps teach about law to help us grow up into adults confident with our legal knowledge. What I like about this podcast is the way it helps us understand the legal system and its complex concepts. The episode I suggest starting with is called Why are Children's Rights in Scotland the Strongest in the UK? The episode explores about the age of criminal responsibility and how Scotland raised this age from 8 to 12. Even this age is still younger than in other parts of the world. Fascinating stuff. I was lucky enough to ask Alma Constance a few questions. I wanted to know what keeps her interested in laws that impact children's lives and why this is so important. Hello there, I'm Alma Constance Dennis-Smith and I'm the host of Kids Law Podcast. Thank you so much for inviting me to answer these questions today. I'm going to start off with the first question, also quite a hard question in my opinion. So in every episode of Kids Law, there is a new theme that relates to children and our lives in particular. And there is not a single episode where you don't hear about how children's lives can be impacted by law. So there is always a new subject in which children are concerned, which is really interesting and I think also quite intriguing. I'm always fascinated and excited to hear the different views of our amazing guests on Kids Law and finding out how all of our lives are changed by the law. Usually, the law has a reputation for not changing very much, but I discovered that in fact, it is constantly changing with new laws coming out. For example, the new age of marriage was raised from 16 to 18 very recently. The way laws are applied is important to how they affect children, not just how they are written. I think it really is so incredibly important for children to know about how law can impact and even change our lives. Not many kids have much knowledge about law, and since law plays such a big part in everyone's everyday lives, it is vital that we know what faces us as we get older. It really is great to know that children and adults all over the world are being educated by kids' law and learning about all the different laws and challenges in the world today. The changes in law that Alma Constance talks about are one of the big reasons I enjoy listening to kids' law. We could be forgiven for thinking that there's nothing new happening, but we'd be wrong. I couldn't resist asking whether she plans to become a lawyer in the future. 
I really am not sure what I want to become yet. I mean, I obviously am very interested in law and I enjoy politics, enjoy debating too. But I am also passionate about piano and music. And every Saturday I go to the Royal Academy of Music for uh, something called Saturday Music School. So I have many interests and I don't know what I want to become when I'm older just yet. But I have enough time to decide. I would like to end by saying thank you again. And I really enjoyed answering these questions. Goodbye. Thank you, Alma Constance, for taking the time to join me on Serafina Speaks. It was lovely to hear about your love for the piano, as well as your passion for the legal system. Now, back to celebrity special treatment. Being a celebrity brings great pressure and anxiety because the trend is to make their imperfect lives seem perfect and then make this public. They don't always have a safe place to express their worries and vulnerabilities. Day to day, they might not even realise that they're struggling. Celebrities probably become very good at covering it well. It's a social cover they put on as an act. It's self-preservation, so they can meet the needs of their celebrityness. Before we play a tiny violin for them, celebrities often use their fame to obtain an awful lot of advantages in life. Let's take a look at some common situations. I've already talked a bit about politics, but I've got to tell you that the politician to Z list, Celeb Path, is becoming well used in Britain. It's the other way wound in America. A 2021 survey from Pipsley found that 63% of Americans said they believed that celebrities made good politicians, while a UK think tank report from 2021 warned that 63% of Britons described politicians as merely out for themselves. Losing faith in our politicians is not a surprise when they partied during lockdown and fiddle their expenses. We're told as children to have high standards, but our politicians seem to think it's okay to behave badly. The biggest problem happens when politicians don't court media attention for the greater good, but for their own egos. Let's move on to the impact of celebrity brand endorsements. Famous celebrities receive special treatment in hotels, by fashion brands, in restaurants, and all over the place. I can't tell you who, but my mama knows a super famous celebrity. This person is a name you'll know whether you live in Britain or not. She calls mama over to hers to have first pick on huge piles of clothes she's gifted by brands. They might have been worn once, most are brand new. It's an insane amount of clothes sent through just in case. With perks, however, comes responsibility. What happens when a celebrity is unhappy with their special treatment? I'll let award-winning entrepreneur Trent out loud, that's his name, explain how this can play out. Should store owners or boutique owners cater to celebrities differently than they do regular customers? The answer is yes. <laughs> Yo, let me explain to you where I got this from and then explain to you why I, I think this. So quickly, um, Haley Berry, Bailey, and her sister, Chloe, who I love, love me some Chloe Bailey. So they had a, an appointment at a nail salon, Chloe to come with her. She's been going to this nail salon, bringing them a bunch of business, whatever. She really loves the salon. She was running a little bit late. She was like, I'm going to be 30 minutes late. The nail salon was like, yo, you, you need to make it on time, please. She's like, okay, I'll be there in 15 minutes. They say, okay, fine. Haley showed up. Chloe still couldn't make it. Haley was in the middle of getting her nails done. Chloe shows up and the lady was like, sorry, it's too late. It's 30 minutes late. Cannot take you. Haley was like, if you can't take my sister, then I'm not finishing my appointment. Haley got up mid um, getting her pedicure and her nails and was like, yo, if you can't take my sister, you can't take me. I'm a good customer. I'm a loyal customer. I've been coming here. My whole glam squad has been coming here. I brought you a lot of business. We are going to leave went on Snapchat, told the story, didn't say the name of the salon or anything. And now people found out the name of the salon and is dragging the salon, giving them um, bad uh, Yelp reviews. 
etc. So here's my point of why I vehemently disagree with the salon owner. And a lot of people online like, uh, celebrities are people too. A celebrity is just, you're just not taking a celebrity because they're a celebrity. You're taking a celebrity because they could transform your whole, your whole business. They, these guys, these girls are signed to Beyonce. These girls have millions and millions of followers could change your business from a small business to a mega business. And this is why you need to cater to celebrities differently than you do to the general public. The question is, should the nail salon owner have made an exception and done Chloe's nails, even though she was late? Should she be treated differently because she's a celebrity? Holly chose to stop her treatment midway and then badmouthed the salon online. This would have cost the salon in business as news travels fast. Trent is sure that celebrities deserve different treatment than the general public. What do you think? Is Trent right? Or should Halle and Chloe be treated the same as other customers? Celebrities can make businesses grow just as much as they can take down a whole business in the flash of one social media mention. Business owners must decide how they'll behave when they serve celebrities. Will they provide extra service to keep favour with celebs? Or will they treat everyone the same? I can see the dilemma here. Let's take medical care next. You'd think this would be an easier situation to deal with, wouldn't you? Except it isn't. There's something called VIP syndrome. VIP stands for very important person. VIP syndrome is when medical staff treat celebrities and famous patients differently because they feel pressured to agree to the VIP's demands. Celebrity patients can intimidate or dazzle their care team, which means they might lose their objectivity. For example, six employees were fired for illegally accessing Kim Kardashian's medical records during a hospital stay. Celebrities might also insist on special privileges or on desired treatments or changes in their care plans. This could possibly sabotage the best medical treatment for them. Steve Jobs, co-founder of Apple, wouldn't let doctors remove a pancreatic tumour because he hoped to find alternative treatments. It's said by the time he agreed for it to be taken away, the tumour had spread out of control. Inferior medical treatments happen because doctors might order too many tests because they're anxious about missing something. Also, they might do too few tests or agree to online consultations to spare celebrities pain, embarrassment, or scrutiny. Listeners, I just can't say the word scrutiny. Very personal inquiries might be hard for doctors to ask because of celebrities' power and influence. A celebrity can often buy the most expensive, state-of-the-art care, but special treatment can cause bad results for patients. If you think about travel and you've ever flown, you'll know how much of a palaver it is to get through security and screening. Many airports cater to celebrities with special perks, facilities and luggage security, plus screening lines. These can include private checking waiting rooms, private boarding, and dedicated screening away from the general public. An exclusive members-only terminal called the Private Suite in Los Angeles offers celebrities and people with money complete privacy and security. This comes at a high cost. The last area to explore is law. It seems celebrities often get into trouble, but even more often, they use their status and money to get them out of trouble so quickly that their story is buried fast. One report from the Sentencing Project in the States says two distinct criminal justice systems operate, one for wealthy people and another for poor people and minorities. Some say celebrity mistakes are punished much more softly than those of regular people. Practically, this makes sense. The rich, including celebrities, can afford better lawyers, and they have access to superior rehab services. Judges might also take reputational damage into account while dishing punishment out. 
or they could allow a celebrity to use their platform to make good. It makes sense, but it doesn't make it right. One of the most famous examples of a celebrity getting off easy for a crime was Nicole Ritchie serving 82 minutes of her four days sentence for a driving under influence offence. There are lots of examples if you want to look this up. Celebrities are definitely not above the law, but some appear to enjoy, shall we call them, perks. On the other hand, they pay a high price in other ways. I think the biggest way that they never know if someone likes them for who they really are, or whether it's their money and status people like. Friends, who we admire, pay special attention to, and model ourselves on, shows what we care about individually and collectively at a deep level. Let's give special treatment to those who truly deserve this. Make your own mind up about who that is for you. Listeners, look out for the micro behind the scenes bulletin episode on this week's topic. If you're enjoying Serafina Speaks, please consider supporting the podcast by subscribing to my Substack to gain access to my exclusive digital library of bonus content and more. Put the word Serafina Speaks Substack into your search engine and it'll come up. If you'd like to get more involved in this podcast, why don't you join my correspondent team? All you have to do is post a review for the show on your fave podcast app. Then take a screenshot and send it to me at seraphina at seraphinaspeaks.com. Then I'll be in touch with you about being on the show. By the way, if you're looking for an idea of what to say in your review, if you're like me, you go blank, even though you want to do this. Here's a question for you. Let me know what country you're listening from and what you'd like me to talk about in a future episode. Next week's episode is called On Being Happy to Be Different. Who hasn't felt like they're the one who doesn't fit or belong? I hope you'll join me for that episode. Thanks for listening, everyone. Remember to tell your friends, family and teachers to listen in too if you think they'll enjoy the show. Take care, everyone. Lots of love. Wow, I hope you enjoyed the show, everybody. If you like what you hear, click the subscribe button. This podcast is made possible by listeners like you. Thank you for your support. Don't forget to leave me a review at iTunes or wherever you listen to your podcast because then more people can find my podcast.